Hey everyone, it's Steve, and we're going to continue in the Star Realms campaign. In the last episode, we did finish off Chapter 10, Colony Wars, but I did unlock Chapters 11 and 12, so we're going to jump into Cosmic Gambit. But before we do that, we need to look at the new cards that are available for it. So we head into the card gallery here, and we'll go all the way past Colony Wars to Cosmic Gambits. Nine new cards in this one. This is the first... Uh, Gambit card, Acceptable Losses, lets you scrap up to two cards in your hand. I'm not a big fan of this one, mainly for that you have to get rid of cards in your hand instead of playing them. Next one up, this is a two-use card. On an earlier video, I said that it's maybe one or the other, but for Asteroid Mining, the first time you activate it, you get one trade. The second time you use it, you draw a card, and after you draw the card, this... Uh, Gambit is removed from the game. The next one, Exploration. I really like this one. Scrap a card from your hand or discard pile. Acquire an Explorer for free and put it on top of your deck. So after your first turn, let's say you want to get rid of one of your Vipers or one of your Scouts, you activate this card, you get an Explorer, so you're guaranteed at least two trade in your next turn. Glorious Return. Up next, you may put the cost, you may pay the cost of a card in your discard pile. Put that card into your hand. Scouts and Vipers cost zero. So let's say you have a bunch of trade and you need maybe one more to get a high value card. You activate this one. If you have a scout in your discard pile, you throw them back into your hand, you play it, you use it. Vipers, there is a card here, and it may be the next one, that explains why putting a Viper in your hand would be a good use as well. Now it's not this one. I'll talk about that card in just a moment when I get there. Gray Market. You choose a faction, and for the rest of your turn, cards of that faction cost one coin less. And I think there's a minimum one on this one. If there's a bunch of uh, cost one, let's go Trade Federation cards, like the Federation Shuttle or the Trade Raft, you can't activate this and just buy them all up for zero. I think there's a minimum on this one. Hidden Base. Put a Secret Outpost card into play and choose a faction. During this turn, the Secret Outpost has that faction. Let's say, let's just pick the uh, Mega Hauler from the uh, Year One Promos deck. You grab a card for free, put it on top of your deck. If you have the Hidden Base Gambit, you activate it, make it a Trade Federation card, and then that, and then the Mega Hauler's ally ability activates, and you draw that card that you just picked up and put it right on into play. After the first time you activate it, it gives you four authority on the second activation. The Secret Outpost has four defense as an outpost, and then once it's destroyed, it is scrapped from the game. Rapid Deployment cost, uh, gives you one, one trade, and you may put the next ship you acquire this turn on top of your deck. Some really nice artwork there with the uh, Imperial Frigates, the Fighters, and I think this is the Dreadnought. No, I think it's a Battle Barge uh, is, uh, in the back of this card here. Two-Pronged Attack. This is another Gambit card. This one gives you attack, and it's a dual-use card. First one gives you two attack. The second one gives you an additional three attack and draw a card as well. Veteran Pilots. This is the one that I was talking about with the Glorious Return. And this is a great Gambit to have, but it also encourages you to keep your Vipers in your deck. Whenever you play a Viper, gain two additional attacks, so your Vipers now do three damage instead of the usual one. I do want to talk about Year 2 promos as well, because I think they're in this one. I want to make just make sure I'm covering my bases with this. Trade Federation, Federal Transport, this card is awesome. Gives you cost two trade. Every time you play it, gives you one trade and five authority. The ally ability gives you an extra two trade. The Imperial Smuggler for the Star Empire. This one's pretty good as well. Three attack, draw a card, then discard a card. It's a good early game card. Let's say you've got a, a scout or a viper you don't want to have in your hand. You draw up and then just discard one of the cards that's in your hand. You could also discard the card that you drew. You scrap it, you get your trade back for the cost of two. Probe Bot, the machine cult ship, costs you two, gives you one trade, and lets you scrap a card in your hand or discard pile. Ally ability lets you drop a card, and if you want to go ahead and scrap it, you get three attack out of it as well. The War Kite. 
from the blob. It costs you two. This is an effective card. Five attack each turn. Doesn't have an ally ability, but you can scrap it to destroy a target base. This is a real cheap pickup if you need to blow through somebody's defenses real fast. And again, this is from the year two promos set. The Mercenary Garrison... I believe that this came in a box when I purchased a storage box for my Star Realms and Colony Wars decks. It's an unaligned base of Outpost 5. Depending on what cards you play, you activate different abilities. If you have Trade Federation, it gives you an extra 3 authority. Star Empire, 2 attack. Machine Cult, scrap a card from your hand or discard pile. And the Blob, scrap up to 2 cards currently in the trade row. Moving up to the Security Craft... This is another cost four ship, four attack, three authority every turn, and the ally ability gives you three trade. This is a great card that I love to get my hands on as often as it comes out in the deck. There's only two in the promo, so if you can get both of them, you're in pretty good shape. The Bounty Hunter costs you five, seven attack, and five authority on the ally ability. And if you note the quote... I'm pretty sure it wasn't CEO Shaner that said that first. I think it was Vader to Boba Fett and Empire. Moving back to the Machine Cult, we have the Cargo Mech. Costs you five, and this is a good one too. Gives you four trade every turn. You may scrap a card in your hand or discard pile, and the ally ability lets you destroy a target base. I really like this one, actually. Moving on to the Night Star for the Star Empire. Five trade cost. Gives you 6 attack as a base, and if your opponent has a base in play, you actually get 9 attack from a cost 5 card. Ally ability, of course, lets you draw up. This is one of the relatively few Star Empire cards that doesn't involve the other player discarding a card at the beginning of their turn. The Stellar Ray from the Blob, another good card. I really like the Year 2 promos. I don't think there's a bad card in all of them. I really like everything that they're throwing in this one cost you five every turn you get three trade plus draw a card if you want to scrap it you get six attack which is enough to take out almost any base that may be standing in your way and the last one the merc battle cruiser draw a card gives you six attack and at the beginning of this uh, when you play it at the beginning of the turn you pick a faction and in the game it'll actually like, spin around and it'll show what faction is being represented whether it be blue red yellow or green all right and that's united command we'll be uh looking at that one when we get into chapter 13 we're gonna head into chapter 11 cosmic gambit mission one is entitled operation haystack you are sharice mccain delahunty fifth daughter to imperial duke brian delahunty and you are finally home the recent events in the Morgana Nebula have caused heightened tensions in all nearby star systems, and this has made your job as a smuggler much more difficult, so you have returned to the familiar sectors of the Empire. Chasing a rumor heard in a seedy bar on Pantheon Station, you take your ships to the abandoned volcano mines on Hadra II, the location of the infamous Hadron Grey Market. You can buy almost anything at the market, including information. You've instructed your people to make inquiries about a machine called ship named a Stealth Needle. These mysterious ships have always eluded sensors, and many do not even believe they exist. You are determined to find this amazing tech to satisfy your curiosity and that of the highest bidder. Unfortunately, some of your crew lack your legendary discretion, and their inquiries have gotten the wrong kind of attention from the Grey Guard, the security force known for lethally enforcing the rules of the market. You order everybody back for an immediate takeoff, but your ships are not fast enough to avoid a confrontation with the Grey Guard security fleet. All right, so we have a pretty long, pretty lengthy briefing here. Um, achievements for this mission. Win after acquiring a card of each faction. Acquiring a card of each faction costing three or less. Win after acquiring a one-cost card of each faction. So if you get four one-cost cards from each faction, you will get all, four, all three of these achievements real quick. 
at the beginning of each player's turn, they draw a card and then discard a card. So it's a little, it bites a little bit if you have a bunch of good cards in your hand and you have to dump one of them out. So let's uh, see what we can do with this. So no, I did draw up and I immediately have to get rid of this guy. Starting off with a semi-standard deck, we have two explorers instead of our last two scouts. And the Grey Guard is starting off with one of each. These are the ones that I want to be getting my hands on. The Solar Skiff, the Swarmer, I guess the Battlebot, and the Star Barge are all cards that I need to be getting my hands on. So, do, 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 do. I have Glorious Return as my first Gambit, and also the Grey Market. I'm just going to make sure I don't activate that card here. Um... I'm going to go for a Stellar Reef, because that's one card costing three or less. So I've got six trade coming my way. I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to activate the Grey Market for the Star Empire. Picked up the Heavy Cruiser and the Platform right out of the gate. Ah, oh, dang. One of the factory world. Ooh, Leviathan's in play. And, of course, I don't have... Let's see. Two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to get rid of one of the scouts because I'll still have six trade. Maybe next turn. All right, so... I'm gonna send a scout off. Do that. Let's see what I can pick up here. Ooh, hello. I'll grab the Leviathan because the ally ability for the Leviathan lets you grab a cost three card and put it into my hand, which is what I'm looking to do. And they keep ignoring me. Love it. Okay, Orbital Platform. I'll just swap out a Scout for that. Still don't have that. And I need... I need a Machine Cult card. That's one I don't have yet. I'll grab a Trade Hauler, because I need a 2 or less. I need a 2 or less. Or a 3 or less, I should say. I don't even have enough to break through this. Well, I'd love to get the Central Station, but I know it's not going to happen right away. I'm going to discard the Scout. Destroy the Oracle. Do the discard draw up here. Draw two. And, um... I'm going to do the Convoy Bot. That now takes care of my first two, but I still don't have that one-cost card from each faction. It's kind of tough to find when none of them are one-cost cards. Grab the central station, because that's going to help us out in trade. Yeah, and really hard to get all the achievements here when the cards are not coming out in your favor. And I did talk about that in the last mission, where the cards just weren't coming out in my... Just were not coming out for me. We'll discard a scout. And we'll discard another scout. I should do this to draw two to give me more options here. Draw one and now discard another card, so I'll get rid of the scout. Get rid of him. Get the falcon into my hand. I just want to keep drawing up cards. The mission is over. I've already won here. There's one of them. And there's the cargo mech that I can't do anything with this game. I'm trying. I'm hoping that I get the right cards to come out here, but that's going to do it for this mission. But I do believe it is easy to get all three of these achievements in one playthrough. Unfortunately, it was not... Cards are not coming out in my favor this turn. I only got one 
of the four cards that I needed to get, and that was the Star Empire's Star Barge. But that's going to actually wrap it up for the first mission of Chapter 11. I'm still kind of restacking the channel, deciding what's going to go where and when. Um, I am kind of leaning to putting Star Realms as a weekend series, since they don't get any viewers, since they don't get any views on the channel. Uh, I'm actually just going to pull up uh, the YouTube studio and just see. But I'm just going to look at what I have for Chapter 10. Is yes, that... That's that, that's that. It looks like I have a total of, so far, and I've only put out the first uh, three missions uh, in chapter 10 when I'm recording this one, and combined those three videos have 16 views. That's actually pretty typical for my channel, so I may just move, them off, move all these uh, videos to the weekend and keep doing Command and & Conquer and now, Republic at War, that's uh, been going on hopefully for a few episodes by this point. I'm going to keep those going on during the week. Like, comment, and subscribe if you want to keep seeing content from this channel. I do read the comments, so feel free to tell me how terrible I've been playing this game. Tell me a way to do it better. I will read it. I'll most likely reply to it as well. Thank you all for watching, and I shall see you all in the next mission.